the sense is this, your elbow is okay. How does it feel for you? Oh, it's fine. It's swelling went down, so no worries. You didn't have to do any draining or anything? No. It's not throbbing at all? It's still like kind of a bruise or throbbing pain? It's sore just because of the impact, but it's, uh, I guess the spot it's at doesn't affect the range of motion. So I can shoot and dribble and do all I need to do. It's just, it's uncomfortable, but it's not, uh, it's not necessarily painful. Have you watched him play that a few times since then or no? I saw it once. Uh, not a lot of help. <laughs> That's all I'll say. Did you recognize the team owners? I did. I, it was right between uh, him and his wife. I think I stepped on her chair. Um, I don't blame them. They, they're the first responders. It's kind of coming at him pretty quick. The, the road behind, Mr. Fab's there, and everybody to his left. Like a, I want to do like a crowd surfing kind of deal, like at a concert, but uh, they weren't ready. Did you see the guy taking pictures of you? Yeah, I need that picture. That'd be <laughs> something to remember. Kind of disappointed he uh, took that moment to document it, if you will. So took a picture of me, took a picture of I think Draymond or Andre who were behind me on the court. So he was taking in the moment. Does it cause you to reevaluate whether you would do the same thing next time? I mean, for the most part, those are split decisions. You don't really weigh the options or the risks really when you're chasing a, you know, a loose ball. Obviously, I'd rather stay on the floor as much as possible and whatnot. It's kind of kind of dangerous, but I don't I don't know how you can play hard and do what you need to do in those situations, 50-50 balls, or whatever, with any doubt in your mind of, all right, you know, protect yourself, really, especially in a playoff situation. Have your coaches or teammates or anybody in the organization asked you to please don't do that again? Uh, some have, but most know if it's a situation like that, I always try to make the best decision whether I can get the ball or not, but that's it. Overall, do you feel pretty banged up? I mean, got a couple injuries, now this. I mean, are you okay? Um, I'm doing all right, I man. Nothing, nothing to really worry about. Um, it's nice to have three days in between to get get your body right, but um, such it is in playoff basketball. That's you kind of you gotta be uh, be prepared for anything. Step that uh, 37 footer you hit at OKC in overtime. Is that a moment that sticks out among others in in your MVP season? Well, this is a big shot and a big play and a very uh, eventful night overall for a lot of different reasons. So to get that win was uh, meant a lot. You know, just having been you know down in that game and uh, claw our way back and the way we even just got into overtime. So yeah, regular season-wise, that was a big, a big win for us and a big shot. It doesn't mean anything uh, going back there for the playoffs. What's the what's the benefit of the, the sleeve on the elbow? Is that just compression, just to make sure I, I can get shots up and not have any swelling. So that's it. Uh, that severe the way it looked during the game, yeah, but. Uh, these are kind of, those are kind of, from what I hear, very common injuries. If you know, you land on something, a hard surface, or get bumped, elbow, hip, knee, they tend to kind of swell up. They don't cause any problems mechanically or whatnot. So you can still use, you know, I can still use my arm, do what I need to do. It just looks ugly and is a little uncomfortable. That's it. Could you talk about how to guard the KD? Who? Uh, KD. Wrong person to ask. <laughs> I don't know. I don't really guard him that much. But you got to stay tight on him and make him just make tough uh, or take tough shots. He'll make some of them, but he, he's seven foot with a handle and can shoot and has range. He's a tough, tough matchup. How much of a luxury is it to have someone like 
Draymond who can play that sort of center field on defense and help out where he's needed against this team and the way you guys are playing defense? I mean, he's done it all year. It's just a different scheme now. So it's the same concept. It's just he's in different positions. It can be more aggressive. So uh, his IQ is great enough that, you know, whatever lineup they throw out there, he can find a way to impact the possession. And, you know, our job around him and uh, anybody that's out there on the floor is to you know, try to keep guys in front, communicate and switches and uh, any actions they run and then uh, you know just have multiple efforts on every single position. Do you actually feel him coming up to give you help at times depending on the situation? I hear him. He's always talking so that's the biggest <laughs> and that's the biggest thing that that's where, you know, um, on the defensive end, that's communication. And if you can hear him before the play actually happens, you you know where to where to send the guy or where your help's coming from. He's not sneaking up on people then, huh? No, uh, there's no, no time for that on defense. Speaking of defense, um, after game two, you guys said you were more active defensively than you were in game one. After watching tape, what stood out to you? The, uh, we just had less breakdowns. The first game one, we had too many situations in pick and rolls where we sent two to the wrong guy, left the guy wide open. That's a threat. We, um, we rotated without having IQ of where we were going, um, and we we just kind of you know paid attention to the details on, on those kind of situations. Um, obviously, it wasn't wasn't perfect. We can continue to get better. There's still some, a couple of slip ups, but in the half court offense, it's we, we measured our success by just trying to make them take tough shots every possession, and we were able to do that. Being on defense for you guys in those first two games. I mean, he's he's huge. He's um, he's trying to bother KD as much as he can. You know. Swiping at the ball, making him uncomfortable with the dribble, and just contesting shots. Obviously, Katie's had big, big numbers. And he's going to get points just because he has the ball in his hands so much and and whatnot. But she, over the course of 48 minutes, you hope uh, that he can wear wear him down as much as he can, and and we have to help him, um, you know, behind him on the on the defensive end. I think he's been, um, I wouldn't say un undervalued. I think people know how much of an impact he has every single night, whether he has four points or 20 points. When he's out there, he's, he has a presence as a playmaker on both ends of the floor. So um, he's a huge X factor for us, and it obviously showed in the playoffs last year, and it's continuing to show as we go through uh, this this playoff run. Last game, second quarter, Jessica got one and tapped down the court. Is that part of it playing? Did Steve ask you to do that, or just that you play by yourself? Just have creativity and, and make make plays. That's, that's what he trusts us to do all the time. So after game one, you said you had so many quick shots. Uh, you know, how do you do? You know, how do you avoid in game three? Um, we just. Well, some of the quick ones we took in game two, we made them, which helps. But there were still certain situations where we got a little rushed uh, on second chance opportunities, not not uh, taking our time and resetting and whatnot. But for the most part of the second half, we moved the ball from side to side, and everybody touched it and got involved and made them make decisions on defense and hopefully have some breakdowns and we, we are able to get open looks. And how gifted you are on offense. How do you rate yourself as a defensive player? Um, I feel like I go out and do what I'm supposed to do. Um, whether it's noticeable or not, I try not to have any breakdowns on the on the ball, guarding you know, my man, getting steals, deflections, um, contesting shots. Rotate when I need to. Uh, 
I, mean, I love that people try to, you know, create mismatches with me on the defensive end because those are, one, I love that challenge just as a competitor, and two, most of the time it means that doing something that they, they usually don't like to do. So we, uh, we welcome, you know, that kind of uh, game plan against us. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks, Steph. Thanks, Steph.